Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with A Place Further Than The Universe episode number 12 reaction. Alright, the previous episode was another amazing episode. Um, it deals with again human emotions and we actually deal with Hinata's problem uh, where she has this type of we've seen her before you know she actually doesn't want to involve other people in her own business and she's kind of reserved um, and like you know hides stuff you know doesn't like you know want because she doesn't want others to get get bothered and this type of uh, like you know personality she has we get to know about her past where she like you know like she was selected for um like a for, for like a, a competition in, in in school in a school uh while being uh an underclassman and the seniors got mad at that but previously her friends told her and encouraged her to go ahead because according to them they said like oh the seniors would love that and you know like you should not hold yourself back while hinata after hinata did that and gets selected they start going behind her back and buttering up the senpais talking against her which kind of made her uh, lose complete faith in the friends that she thought they were and she became like that so <clears throat> like that was the whole problem and now like you know now that they're in antarctica these characters came and they are like oh i want to like you know meet uh, like you know talk with her and uh, repatch our friendship and this did not sell with, well with Hinata or any one of them. Obviously, like it, it did not sit well with Shirase, particularly because she is a person who's vocal with her thoughts and everything. So in the end, by the end of it, uh, like we see Hinata struggling throughout the whole thing and being kind of reserved. She tells uh, Shirase like you don't need to do anything, just you know, just just ignore. But Shirase, as we know, you know, Shirase is a bit vocal with her things. So she just uh, straight up tells in front of the camera that uh, yeah we don't need you we she has friends now real friends who wants the best for her and yeah we are happy here so you should like you know like uh, stay with the guilt that you never were there for her when she needed it and now you're trying to patch up your relationship you should live with that guilt and like in the end she says piss off so yeah and obviously Hinata was like you know like crying and everything and uh, yeah like I guess after after this I'm, I'm really hoping Hinata becomes more vocal with her thoughts uh, because you need to communicate you know you, you need to communicate especially with friends so I really hope she doesn't keep anything from her new friends you know like uh, should I say um, um, Kimari uh, Yuzuki she doesn't keep anything from them and she you know like actually relies on them from here onwards I'm sure that will happen. They, they, they have become good friends now. And uh, yeah, that was that episode. So let's see what this episode brings. This is the penultimate episode, episode number 12. After this, one more episode left. So I'm guessing we're going to tour uh, Antarctica a little bit in this episode. I'm looking forward to that. So let's get started with this episode. This is episode number 12 of uh, A Place Further Than The Universe. So I'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here. Sync it to whichever is your preference. And let's get started. Okay, here's the countdown. Three, two, one, go. What's happening? Oh, is it the past? Okay. Oh, her grandma. She's the only good, uh, person she has left. Oh, yeah. Okay. Whoa. Oh no no, this is about her mom. Oh sorry, sorry. I thought something happened to her grandma. I guess when she she got to know that her mom did not come back. That that okay, okay. Oh I I, I was misunderstood that for a second there. Place further than the universe. No cat. Ooh, oh that that thing. Uh -huh. What's she doing? Oh, she's cutting her hair. <laughs> hmm. 
Hmm. Will you go? I think that's what she's saying. Um. Yeah, she needs to get her get her uh, feelings sorted out, I guess. Ah. Uh. Oh. Okay. Oh, interesting. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, my God. Ah. <laughs> well, just came to check up with her, I think. <laughs> well, this is Antarctica. <laughs> mm, she was looking at that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Awkward conversation. Oh, what? What? What's happening? Ah, uh, she's. <laughs> oh, yeah, but Hmm. Ah, well, she came here because of her mom, that's why. <laughs> yeah. Like, her mom's motivation was something different. She came here to actually... Because we see the sites for the observatory. And yeah, and she came here because her mom came here and wanted to see what her mom see. So it's different for both of them. Her main reason was her mom. Hmm. Ah. <sighs> He doesn't want to, yeah, he wants to keep hanging to her mother's, yeah, oh my god. What? Okay. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. 
Look at them. Just, just. <laughs> oh. Hmm. Yeah, I think I think she needs to talk with Gin. Wow, it's something that she made up. <laughs> hmm. Oh my God, yo! Okay. Wow, she's so happy. She's like, yeah, that's what I wanted, friends. <laughs> hmm. She should make her own, you know, decision. She came here to, with her own decision, so she should keep doing that, even after coming here. Otherwise, she won't be able to get her a peace of mind after going back. Oh. Yeah, true. Hmm. She's, I guess she's also kind of the same if you think about it. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, she, as I said, she has started this on her own. She did everything on her own, on her own decision, and now she's here. So. Wow. God, she had to, like. I mean, are these like the part-time job that she did? I think so. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm sure she'll, she'll join. There yeah, she is. There you go. Hmm. Oh, okay now i'm guessing we're going to see you know the scenes and oh. oh wait why are they yeah they said they're oh okay Wow. <laughs> oh. 
Well, obviously, like so much snow and everything. Okay. <laughs> Oh. Okay. Whoa. Damn, this place is just <laughs> Yeah. Why is that a what you hold like a banana? <laughs> Uh, oh damn Yep, you did it Yeah Hmm Yeah. Oh, sunset? No, wait, the sun is not supposed to set. Sun pillar. Oh. Okay, yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Ah, if someone gets lost in this, obviously we can understand. Yeah, okay. We can understand what would happen. If something on the island. Oh. Oh no. Yeah, and you can start, you, you can find her in this. Oh my god. Yeah, that's true. Because they're here with everyone else. <laughs> yeah.
Oh, that's why the banana. I was wondering why. Okay. Uh oh. Okay, well... Challenge for Antartica. <laughs> yeah. Oh. That's the name, okay. Yeah, it's mom's. <sighs> okay. Oh. Hmm. I'm I'm pretty sure her mom probably left something here. Let's see. Okay. Oh, the picture. Ah, uh, there you go. Oh. Oh, that's a wait. Oh, was that? Oh, that that, that was a laptop. Oh, so I thought it was a. Okay. Probably something related to her. One one zero one. Oh, it probably translates in like you know number. Reason. Oh, it's all coming in. It's all coming in little by little. All the messages that he has, she has sent. God.
she was like writing letters every day. <sighs> Damn, okay. Hmm. I'm guessing there's something to the left. Oh no, that's the end. Okay. All right, so episode here, we we are finally we reach the place where her mom was. Okay, so. Here we begin with a little flashback where we get to at first I thought like you know like uh like since they they you know they mentioned her grandma I thought did her grandma also die or something? But then and later on I realized like no it was actually they're talking about uh like you know her grandma called to let them like you know like to inform them that yeah uh she does say they should come back home because something happened to her mom and that was the thing and i then i realized i was like okay so this is the time when she got the information what happened to her mom and she rushes back home to yeah see that scene and we can see like you know like them like marking in the map at first i didn't realize what that was and now i realize it was probably the place where she went missing and uh, yeah okay now like i knew this was going to happen because they were actually going like in there at a place where her mother was like you know was there and i knew she was going to get a little uncomfortable as she as we reached the place where her mother went missing and uh, that's what was happening to her she she really was thinking about whether i should go there or not and what i should do so okay so here's the thing um she now this is as far as i could understand um both shirase and like the thing that shirase actually says here is i thought that i was going to cry as soon as i came here i thought when i would see my mother the the, the scenes that my mother saw i was going to start crying but then after coming here, I realized that, oh, these are just like the pictures and nothing happened. I, I, then I, I thought that I'm going to cry very much, but I didn't even shed a tear. So this thing now I can like, you know, like, like both Takako and Shirase, both of their reasons were completely different here. Takako came here genuinely because she wanted uh, to do something for the observatory, this and that that's why she was moved as soon as she came here she just saw the sceneries saw them uh, like you know saw everything and she was like oh this is beautiful and that's her that was her wish while she has his wish was to see the place where her mom came and see the views that her mom saw she basically came here because of her mother to get some you could say closure or to see something that is related to her mom here and he she came here solely because of her mother and that's why coming here and seeing those scenes probably didn't like do anything that much to her 
she she definitely thought that yeah this is beautiful but that was it her main focus here was her mom and to do that she needs to to fulfill her mission she needs to go to the place where her mother went where her mother went missing and she was actually being conflicted throughout this whole episode at least the first half of the episode to whether she should go there or not and you know she she continuously was thinking about all the past uh the time that she has spent with her mom all that stuff so <clears throat> she came here to i don't know maybe i, th I think she in her, her mind she thought that i'm coming here to get some closure but after she came here she realized that no i didn't come here for some closure i actually came here to get a new hope now i, I see like you know like shirasa here saying uh, not shirasa sorry gin here saying that um one thing we should definitely um like you know realize is that uh, takako is dead and when she says that we see her twitching she was sitting behind her side we see her twitching and i feel like she still had this like you know hope you know like like her her brain probably like you know it's continuously telling telling her that yeah it's impossible for your mother to still stay alive in this like in antarctica she knew that she definitely knew that but probably her heart did not uh you know did not accept that her heart heart probably like was continuously thinking like maybe maybe she's alive she knows she very much herself knows that yeah it's impossible but you know human heart is a tricky thing and she she probably still had this type of uh, expectation which she knew could not be could not come true but she she still had it and that's why coming here and like you know she realizes that if she goes to the place where her mother went missing she was going to fully realize that her mother is no more and that's why she was being conflicted because she didn't want that she still wanted to hold on to that like you know glimmer of hope that yeah maybe mother is there somewhere and going to that place would actually shatter that illusion completely and she was probably being conflicted because of that because she was clinging to her past like you know uh, mother's uh, uh, image and she did not want that to shatter and i don't know this is just how i interpret this episode and by the end of it i think she she yeah definitely she comes into terms with it and she she, she realizes that yeah she's not here anymore all right this episode it starts with uh, as i said it starts with the whole uh, scene the flashback scene and then we come back to the present uh, time where gin and all of them are talking to the girls about uh, how they are going in that place and they talk about how it's going to take a lot of time this and that they're going to take the snow cat and uh, the helicopter can go there and everyone's quite excited shirase obviously says that i need a little bit of time let me think about it and i'll answer uh whether i would go there or not then we go to the next scene where they were like releasing the weather balloon and okay interesting thing they say here uh, since they say like the hole in the ozone layer was discovered during an expedition here yeah that make that would make sense you know like this is antarctica and okay these weather balloons are released twice a day simultaneously at places all over the world oh i wonder what why they're released like probably some kind of calculations or something maybe i don't know something like that i'm guessing weather balloons all right um that happens and the day the, the the girls were talking about shirase they're like yeah let, let's give her some time uh she and gin is going to talk about the situation and then they'll be like you know, she has to come to the decision and i i was i always thought she had the you know like her phone uh, we again see her the phone in her hand and she was writing letters uh emails not letters sorry <laughs> emails and i i always thought that she wrote that and i don't know i i thought she that was just her way of like you know like i don't know like 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 she was just you know like it seemed as if she's communicating with her mom 
and she just wrote that and I don't know why I thought she probably saved it or something. I realized this episode that she's actually continuously sending it. I actually realized this in this episode. So that means here in this episode where we see her with her phone with the email uh, page open, she, she was sending the uh, email to her mother here as well. You know, at that moment, she probably sent it to her. And that's why in the end, we see so many emails just coming in. And she was doing that. I, 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 it never crossed my mind. I, it never, I never thought that she was actually sending it. I thought she was just writing it down and I don't know, saving it or doing something like that. I, I thought that's what she was doing. But yeah, we, I, I actually you know, get cleared up about the situation. She was actually sending it to her actively. Even though she knew that, yeah, like, it's probably not reaching her. But I guess her doing that as well kind of shows how she had this glimmer of hope that mother is there somewhere. You know, her mind knew that it's impossible, but her heart said that, nah, she's there. Maybe, maybe she's there. Maybe a 0.1% chance she is there somewhere. <clears throat> Okay, so now she has this kind of like, you know, just kind of thinking about it. Kimari comes in and talks to her and <laughs> they're kind of like, you know, awkwardly talking. And by the end of it, we can see Kimari is unable to keep her tears down. She just starts crying. And we've seen that her do that before as well, you know, whenever these type of situation comes, she just starts crying. <laughs> she herself is confused about the situation. She herself doesn't probably know how to talk to Shirasa at that moment. And just that, like, you know, that situation probably just made her cry. Like, we saw this in, uh, I think, um, in Yuzuki's, yeah, in Yuzuki's uh, situation as well, in, the pre in one of those episodes. Uh, you know, that uh, birthday episode? <laughs> she just starts crying. Oh, my God. Now, <clears throat> here she talks about the whole thing that I, I just said, you know. Like she says, like, uh, they're, like, spilling onions and then something. And she talks about how she thought that she was going to cry here as soon as he comes. But, you know, after coming here, she was like, oh, this is just like the pictures. And that's why she's being conflicted. And, okay. All right. And then Kimari here starts talking about like, oh, you need to go there because, you know, like you did it. Like, you know, on your own, you, you started this, you, you started going to the part time and everything. And um, like, wait, where is that part? Like she says here, here we go. You wanted to come here because of your mother was here, right? Yeah, that's why you asked Kanae-san over and over, took all those jobs, worked so hard to get here. I know that you said that your mother was waiting for you here. Yeah, and that was like, no, it's, it's not a nice way to say that. And Kimari is like, yeah, you, you did that. You, you, you started all of this. You did this because you wanted to come here, go to the place where your mom was. And you also wanted to find your mother. So why are you stopping now? And I, I guess this was her way of, I don't know, like telling her that, yeah, you should move forward in this situation. Because if you don't go there and go back, there will be that part of you that will regret this in the future. I'm guessing that's what Kimani was actually trying to say here. And I also thought about it, you know, like I was also like of the similar opinion. Um, when Shirase was saying that, oh, like, I don't know if I should go or not. I was also thinking that, yeah, she should definitely go because um, not like, you know, this is Antarctica we're talking about. This is not your neighborhood playground that you can just revisit there whenever you want to. This, this is a once in a lifetime chance and who knows, maybe in the future, you probably will never get a chance like this. Like it's 80% uh, uh, chances of you not coming back here any in the future. So if you actually don't go there, come back home and in the future, you are definitely going to regret not going to the place where your mom went, even though you had the chance to do that. And you should definitely do like you know, do that okay? because she started this whole thing because she had a uh, like you know like like a, an urge or um, a goal to go to the place where her mom went and see the scenes where her mother what her mother saw so like that was that urge or that uh, determination was so much 
she saved a million yen like imagine how many people are able to do that just by doing part-time keeping your studies like you know doing everything and still saving that much amount of money by your on your own and she did that she was able to succeed in doing that that was how high her determination and her like you know like her uh, uh yeah determination was so after that coming here she like you know she, if she doesn't go yeah she's definitely going to regret that in the future and that's why kimari was kind of like you know just saying it like that and uh, yeah but she has, still needs a little bit of time now uh we see like you know them like kind of like you know, giving a little party or something you know they were like all eating and everything outside yeah the uh like you know <laughs> gin and all of them were like you know like, drinking alcohol while they were drinking juice obviously they're underage <laughs> and we can see how like the, the the food is like hot but as soon as it comes out of the barbecue thing it just like, instantly it turns cold so they were like just eat it quickly and we can see like them just putting it in just put and taking it out and putting it in the mouth without even waiting <laughs> oh my god that was kind of interesting like obviously this is antarctica and we are going deeper into the whole thing and it's, it's starting to get get even more chillier and <laughs> now uh the the lunch lady i forget her name always she she asked her like okay so aren't you going to say anything to shirase and <laughs> Hinata's like to act is not necessarily compassion true true compassion sometimes sometimes is the key word here like comes from inaction sometimes you know not always um so it depends as as she says like you know we should just keep an eye out for her and just wait for her to come to a decision that in itself is true compassion sometimes <laughs> Yuzuku is like more nonsense like no this is not nonsense this is actually true this is a very good advice like if Hinata actually came up <laughs> with that on her own props to her <laughs> and um the lunch lady was like oh then you guys are fine um uh, yeah i envy you guys the ability to give each other space is the proof that you're good friends there you go So that happens, and oh my god, the other guy starts a fire here. <laughs> and they're like, oh yeah, we are good friends. And Yuzuku's like, yes, yes, we are good friends. Like, alright. Now, she has a me meets with Gin. They start talking, and um, here we go. Here, as I said, here um, Gin talks about how you know, she says that you might not want to believe it, but the fact is, Takako is dead. And like that's what i was saying you know like i i feel like she she also was still clinging on to the hope of maybe i'm going to find my mom here and actually going to that place is going to shatter that hope and she she was actually afraid of that happening so that's why she was hesitating and just gin just like directly tells her that yeah it's like it's, it might be like you know you know difficult to believe this but your mom is no more <clears throat> and uh and she also says that um like yeah we came here because we wanted to and uh where is that part because i latched onto the idea that takako wanted me to at the end of the day those ideas we latch on to aren't enough to motivate us but when we run around on the injustice of reality they're the only things that can break through make them possible possible and allow us to proceed on that's what I believe. Yeah, she's like, you're saying I shouldn't leave it to anyone else? Yeah, definitely. That's right. But that's how you've always done things, isn't it? Yeah. And that's what I was saying. Like, she has always done this alone. And then we get to the flashback where we see her actually kind of, like, you know, counting the money, taking out the money. And she's like, oh, this is a cash register. This is, um, uh, what? Some other things, I think, like, what, what did she say? Cashier, cleaning, yeah. Um, cleaning, traffic surveys, cleaning, like, okay, just, just 
putting the money and counting the money like that and this shows how she just was saving uh throughout her whole like you know like this whole thing and that was her determination and she started this on her own decision and she has always done that and this time as well she should make her own decision she should actually think about it like take others like you know help uh, to make your decision but the final decision should be your own because whatever you do you are going to do it and whatever regrets or anything that you have you have to face it after you go back so if you actually do this on someone else's advice or something don't do that because like you know like you're definitely going to regret it somehow down the line so unless and until you do something on your own and take your own decisions here you're definitely going to regret it so take help from your friends ask for their advice but the ultimate decision should lie with you and you do what you want to do and even if the choice is wrong i guess you know even if she decided here that yeah i won't go even if that choice was wrong at least it would be her own choice and she might feel regret in the future but it was a decision that she took so i guess that's what she tries to tell her like you have been doing this from on your own no one helped you so the decision the ending decision should also be your own and uh, after listening to that shirase comes to a decision she's like she comes the next day and she's like yeah i'm going to join and then we go like you know like to like more deeper into the the whole like you know antarctica like you know this the thing is the, the the temperature shifts down even more and the snow cat is like just moving i think those are the snow cats aren't they those like things yeah uh like at five kilometer per hour <laughs> and it's like just little by little just going and they are like inside like playing um cards trump and damn like as they were going in and i was like wow it's so cold like they they're like oh my nose is just like you know just being bitten off and the the soup that they were drinking are just constantly like, instantly getting cold and oh boy i'm i'm like you know in my place it's it's, it's kind of hot here really like you know in in summers like our place actually uh like reaches like 45 degrees centigrade like that's like you know it's it's that hot like it, it's intense here and uh the like you know the, the cold it's also like you know cold sometimes but it's not that cold compared to japan and i know japan like it actually snows there so they are accustomed to cold so these people being affected by the cold in antarctica actually makes me realize what i would feel if i actually went there i'd probably just pass on pass out you know just just go like an instantly pass out like it's impossible like you know like people <laughs> we like you know like you know, people in my country are accustomed to hot like you know weather <laughs> not this amount of i like you know this let me check how much temperature does antarctica reach actually let me check antarctica lowest temperature um <clears throat> damn the coldest temperature recorded in antarctica was 8 minus 89.6 degrees centigrade at vostok station <laughs> but the normal temperature is about um minus 50 or something ah uh, uh. yeah minus 10 to minus 60 oh my god <laughs> ah like i i remember <laughs> in my country there was like a time when it actually like you know was like 10 degree centigrade in the winter and i was just freezing i'm like like just end this like i want summer to come back and oh my god okay yeah i'd probably just pass out i'll be unconscious probably if i went to antarctica <laughs> yeah <laughs> not happening <laughs> oh boy okay so All right. Okay. Now, one thing <laughs> I I did not understand. They took a, at first. I did not understand. They took a banana, and I'm like, wait, why are they taking bananas with them? Later on, I see them actually hammering the nails with the banana, and I'm like, oh, that's why. Is that is that what they do? They use banana to hammer nails. 
like <laughs> I don't know that that the scene seems scene seemed really funny. I'm guessing the banana I've like just got frozen completely, obviously. At that temperature, and it was probably as hard as a hammer, and she was just <laughs> hammering the nails with the banana. <laughs> uh, I guess it's like uh, you know, like uh, what do you call them? DIY? Yeah, that kind of thing. Like just <laughs> using a banana to hammer. Okay. Anyways, and okay. Now here's one thing that's kind of interesting. Here, Gin actually gives a. Uh, uh, she has said the uh, the walkie-talkie and says that oh you do the like you know daily report because nobody knows what's going to happen to us like you know like God like you know like knows if someone might get stuck here or something happens so you need to know this and just for like you know safety purposes and uh, yeah I guess that's where it struck Shirase that yeah like out here like anything could happen to us so all the people here any one of us could just be lost and just like you know like uh, like go missing or something might happen like that so it's 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 a continuous danger and i guess that's when all, it also struck her that yeah my mom also probably something happened to her like this and they'll then start talking about like now how is the blizzard starts and they're outside something could happen you know they should never go outside this and that and she just is just like you know thinking about her mom and then we see like the um, sun pillar, I think that's what they called it. It's an optical illusion caused by the ice crystal. Interesting. Uh, yeah, and she asked like, did my mom see this as well? And he was like, yeah. Now, after that, we see it's a snowstorm outside. It's just, you know, just intense. And they're all inside and they're all looking outside. And she says, no, like she, she's like was it like this when my mom went missing and uh, yeah like now here we get to know more detailed information Gin says uh, we think she left something at the inland station or maybe she slipped so that's how she went missing I guess and we see like you know we see the like Gin like a little flashback Gin looking behind and the rope is just I guess it was just untied or something like she was gone and then we see like the, the 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 scene that we've already seen like uh, the walkie talkie it comes on and gin is like where are you takako and takako is like oh this is beautiful and she you know, she loses her life there yeah. uh, then we go back to that uh, like you know like shirase again shirase is just you know wide-eyed awake looking at the scene and just thinking about uh, her mom gin like you know what they were probably doing here and Kimari starts talking to her and Kimari is like and she is like do you like it here Kimari is like yeah but you know what I probably would have liked any place if it was with you guys I like it here because you guys are here if this was the article as well I, I would have liked it and it's like thanks for taking me and I go to leave my youth and that's when she is like yeah I've made friends and uh, then there's a little montage, you know, of them. And here's where I see them <laughs> hammering the nail with the banana. <laughs> and that's when I realized, oh, oh, that's why the banana was here. Uh, and then there we see them like kind of like, having fun, like just singing and everything. And Takako is talking about the whole thing. Uh, she was probably she was probably writing that in an email and narrating that, and she was probably sending it to her mom. And yeah, she talks about the whole thing and she's like, yeah, I've made friends. And yeah, now we are here at the site and observatory site and they're like, okay, we're going to little by little finish this. And Gin is crying at that coming at that place, just remembering the past. And yeah, like Kimari and all of them, like, you know, see that situation and see how Shiraz is just standing there, you know, like, with a very complicated expression on her face, you know, she's just shut off her emotions, just standing there like that. And <clears throat> all her friends are like, okay, let's try to find something out. Maybe your mom left something here. And yeah, and this they, they start like you know, trying to find anything. And then 
we find out the laptop at first i i really did not understand there was a laptop i thought that was just a photo frame or something like that i'm like oh they found a picture and then in the next scene we see them you know going to the uh the the, the you know their place and opening the laptop and that's when i realized oh wait a minute that's a laptop now i do wonder uh, it has been there for a long time so i'm guessing after going back they probably changed the battery or something you know and i'm just i don't know heated up the <clears throat> excuse me heated up the laptop like kind of warmed it it's probably just freezing and everything but they kind of warmed it up or something and then it started working properly I mean, after replacing the battery because yeah like it, it, it's like you know like I, I doubt anything happened to it that's why it was working properly so you open it and starts entering the password and now here's the thing here she enters actually first it kind of goes incorrect then she enters one one zero one ichi ichi zero ichi i'm guessing it's something it, it probably translates to her name or something or maybe her birth date one one zero one 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 i don't know i don't know probably something related to her you know it either translates her name you know like the way the japanese kind of like you know translate number to names that kind of a thing maybe that or it's either her birth date or something like that i'm guessing so related to her and it accepts it and as soon as like you know it opens the message starts coming in and here's where i actually realized that all this time we've been seeing her with the email open she was actually actively sending it to her mother because by the end of it we actually see there are like a thousand or something uh you know like like that amount of uh messages now if you like you know calculate this whole thing uh this this project was actually stopped for i think three years Three years wasn't it yeah and after three years they have come here again so her mom went missing three years ago that would mean if you like you know roughly calculate the total amount of time like you know days would have been um like you know three three fifty three fifty three seven so it's ten uh ten one five uh probably one thousand and one hundred days something like that I I'm i'm doing a rough calculation uh, that amount of time uh, like you know days probably passed after her mom went missing and the amount of emails were more than a thousand um so where was it <clears throat> how many messages was it okay did they i think they kind of showed it where is it yeah 1101 was the last amount we saw it was still increasing so that would mean he she actually sent a letter every day one email every day she probably sent to her mother and it just like you know, she just kept doing that and yeah and she just sees them all coming like you know in at the same time little by little one by one one by one and she starts crying and uh, yeah the, her friends are also standing out uh, sitting outside they also start crying and that's where it ends Oh well, yeah, fantastic episode again. Um, I guess like you know, this, this is the penultimate episode. The next one is the final one, so I'm guessing we're going to wrap everything up in the next episode and come back or something like that is going to happen. Let's see. So and I I I'm, I'm guessing like you know Shira Sail actually, um, you know like in this episode she was able to accept the fact that yeah, my mother is no more, and she was able to come to terms with her feelings yeah and she i guess she's going to start moving forward from here onwards so that's it thanks for watching guys this was my reaction to uh, a place further than the universe episode number 12 so if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to press the like button subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed comment down below anything you want to say and anything you want to let me know and i'll check them out so yeah that was it thanks for watching and i'll see you guys next week with the final episode of a place further than the universe until then, goodbye and have a nice day.